It's college basketball on the ACC Network. Tonight, the number 19 Clemson Tigers taking on the Bearcats of Sam Houston State out of the Southland Conference. And hi, everybody. Welcome in with Kelly Gramlich, Pete Yannity with you. A battle tonight of a couple of teams that have two wins apiece this season. First ever meeting for a Clemson ball club against Sam Houston State. And, well, a Tiger team that last week in knocking off the Citadel North Carolina Central really could not have faced two more drastically different styles in those two ball clubs. And Sam Houston State today is similar to the Citadel. They want to run. They want to get up and down. They average over 80 points per game. They take nearly 70 shots a game, so they want to run and push the pace. They also are very good on the glass. We expect a battle of guards in this ball game. Sam Houston State has the Delaney Twins, and so far in the early going on the season, the one who's a little bit taller, Cameron, has been, well, scoring a little bit better than his twin brother, Josh Delaney. Cameron Delaney played in all 35 games last year for Sam Houston State, but this year has stepped into a new role, is their leading scorer right now at 17 points per game. And like you said, he's the bigger twin. He's more active on the glass at 5.7 rebounds as well. And Cameron Delaney began his career at the University of Denver, but decided he wanted to get back closer to home and join his brother Josh on the Sam Houston State team a few years ago. As for the Tigers, one of the most experienced backcourts in the nation, so you would expect a good play, and it's been so far. Shelton Mitchell getting it done both scoring and distributing. He's doing it all for Clemson so far, Pete. He's averaging 13.5 points per game, which is up from his average last year. He's also distributing. He's shooting the ball well from the free throw line. No misses from the charity stripe, and five of 11 from three. He's been lights out from downtown. Shelton Mitchell so far in the season, 16 points, three assists against the Citadel. He was four out of four on free throws in that game. Then against North Carolina Central, he had 11 points and four assists. And Mitchell, as he was a year ago, just very impressive from the foul line. Four out of four in his second game, so eight out of eight this season. When he's gone to the charity stripe, he's been knocking him down as per usual. Sam Houston State, coached by Jason Hooten. He took over the Bearcats program the same year Brad Brownell arrived at Clemson. Hooten had been an assistant under a fellow named Bob Marlin, who you may remember brought his Louisiana Lafayette team in here a year ago. But Hooten's done a real nice job. We were impressed when we visited with him before the game. It's clear why he's won 160 games in his career. Brad Brownell... Now in his ninth season, guiding the Tigers, he is getting close to 320 career wins. Of course, in the opening game this year, he put up win number 150 at the helm. Got his team off to a 2-0 start, looking for a 3-0 start uh, for a second straight year. Last season, the Tigers got out to a 13-1 beginning. They'd love to repeat that, obviously, this year. They would, and that starts tonight, starting with 3-0 against Sam Houston State. Interestingly, both these coaches have been at their respective programs for the exact same amount of time. Similar number of wins, and Hooten has accomplished a lot as well at Sam Houston State. Javen White gets the start in place of Elijah Thomas, who's been bothered with some flu issues, and he wins the opening tip. Tigers coming off back-to-back 20-point -back wins to start this year, but in much different scoring okay. frames. And so out of bounds, early turnover by a Clemson Ball Club that's been reasonably efficient with the basketball so far this season. A year ago, Tigers gave it up about 12 times a game. Seven newcomers for Sam Houston stayed, and one of them drains the first bucket of the game. Kai Mitchell who transferred in from Hutchinson Community College in Kansas, a New York City area native. He's their tallest starter, so for Sam Houston State to continue to have success on the glass like they have in these first three games, he's going to have to rebound well. At 6'7", seven, seven, he's their tallest in their shotty five. Drive to the bucket, counted in the foul, and to the line goes Marquise Reed, who was held down by North Carolina Central, had just six points in that game after a 20-point debut against the Citadel. And we've mentioned in our first couple broadcasts how Marquise Reed is trying to get better finishing around the paint. That time a floater right outside the lane, and you saw a motion from Marquise Reed after that. I think after having that off game, if you will, against North Carolina Central, it looks like he's ready to go against Sam Houston State. Reed always solid from the foul line. He's now eight out of nine on the season. A year ago, he was 85%. Sam Houston State coming in off a Sunday loss at Louisiana Tech, in which they trailed by 18 points in the opening half, came back late to take the lead before they fell against the Bulldogs by the final of 76-69. Contact inside. And we'll get a foul called against the Tigers, and Amir Sims has his first. Chad Bowie, one of these transfers here for Sam Houston State. A good attack, and 
That thing, that that drive does two things. First of all, you get two free throws, right? But secondly, Coach Hooten, I think, is excited about that because you get a quick foul on Amir Sims. Amir Sims is Clemson's leading scorer at this point in the year. You're one minute in, and he already has one foul. And you're not sure about what you'll get out of Eli Thomas tonight, minutes-wise. Bowie came to them from Kilgore College. His dad played at Oklahoma, then in the NBA, Anthony Bowie. And it's a 4-3 ball game, the visiting Bearcats. And if you're not familiar with college athletics, that's Bearcats with a K as opposed to University of Cincinnati. It spells theirs with a C. The Sam Houston State team has a different look. Reed. And will get the friendly roll. Yeah, he probably feels like he deserves those after the other night when a few of those were bouncing out. He did have some unlucky rolls the other night against North Carolina Central. And it seems so far, Reed feels very inclined to take this offense into his own hands. Sam Houston State applying a little token pressure. So a short shot clock, and Reed gets a good shot. Watch that time by Mitchell, who made their first field goal tonight. Here come the Tigers. Mitchell for Clemson. And the Tigers will set it up. Sims back out high. Now Shelton Mitchell for Clemson being defended by Marcus Harris. Bullet pass. White. Little baby hook. And that's a nice move. I don't think we've seen out of him in the first two games. Beautiful move from Javin White. He played well against North Carolina Central. Seven points and six boards in just 12 minutes. You like to see that if you're Clemson because you don't have Eli Thomas in this early going. Oh, good finish inside. Counted and Kai Mitchell of Sam Houston State will head to the line for the three-point play. So Shelton Mitchell committing the foul against Kai Mitchell. Javin White with the silky smooth left-handed hook. A really nice move inside. And then you see Kai Mitchell, who's a transfer here to Sam Houston State, a junior. He's averaging double figures so far in this young season and eight rebounds per game, leading the team in that category. Ty Mitchell originally signed with Iona College right outside of New York City, not far at all from where he's from in Haverstraw, New York, right there along the Hudson River. But opted instead to head to Hutch Community College, one of the really good junior college programs. And it's a 7-7 game. Here's the attack from Bowie. Kai Mitchell rebounding as he's done all year. Like we said, eight boards per game on the season, crashing that offensive glass. Reed to his backcourt mate, Shelton Mitchell. Mitchell driving, as you saw, Cameron Delaney backed off just enough, and Shelton Mitchell, the nice finish, and the Tigers move back in front by a couple. If you can break that token pressure quickly, either with the dribble or the pass, there's going to be a lot of easy twos for Clemson if Sam Houston State stays in that look. With the ball, Cameron Delaney off that 20-point effort against La Tech the other night. Bowie, extra quick. Delaney. And the box out by White. Good rebound. Delaney just a 28% three-point shooter so far. You noted earlier they want to make a lot of threes, but that's not been their calling card over their first three games. Nice find. Sims and White throwing it home. Great ball movement all around there for Clemson. Beautiful pass from Amir Sims. And this is great news for Clemson. Getting Javin White going early with a hook earlier and then an easy dunk. Bowie dogged by Reed, almost taken away, but it finds the corner. The launch no good for Marcus Harris. And the rebound of the Tigers. Here comes Clemson looking to build on the four-point lead. Sims for Reed. Thought about it. Fires it. Got it. You saw the pass fake there from Marquise Reed in the corner. Fake the pass. The defense took one step, and he knocked down the three. Jason Hooten of Sam Houston State saw his team fall behind big early over in Ruston, Louisiana on Sunday afternoon. He doesn't want to see it again. He'll go ahead and burn his first time out. Quick start for Clemson. 14 points in three and a half minutes. The Tigers have yet to miss a field goal. And here is Shelton Mitchell, a guy who's been good so far, attacking the basket, finishing inside in transition. And then watch how Amir Sims create this. Draws the defender. Javin White with the big slam inside. And then finally, Marquise Reed, one little pass fake, gets Cameron Delaney moving, and knocks down the three. Marquise Reed a year ago, 35% beyond the arc. Of course, a guy who's already achieved 1,000 points in his career. And keep in mind, uh, had a great freshman season at Robert Morris. Arrives here, had to sit out the season, but he, he obviously would have done it a year earlier because he would have kept playing at Robert Morris. But what a 
great asset he has been, and as Brad Brownell says, just a pure scorer for Reed, and got him smiling here, and Little John in the early going. Tiger's going to apply a little bit of full-court pressure. Bowie, good ball handler for them. They like the, the new look. They, they lost almost as many as the seven newcomers they brought in. Actually, a few more than that from a team that a year ago won 20 games for the fourth time in the past five seasons. But they like their new guys. They're just trying to get them to gel. And that time, just into the game, Albert Almanza couldn't get the tip to fall. It'll stay Sam Houston State's way. And actually, that was R.J. Smith who went up and nearly knocked that in. The Bearcats have a unique situation because they have so many newcomers, but they're still older guys, seniors and juniors that have transferred. So you're trying to gel, but you do have a lot of veterans. With a second team preseason All-Southland player with the ball, Marcus Harris. Smith arrived from Butler Community College in Kansas. He can shoot it, can't get that one to go. He was three out of four on his first three-point attempts this year. Mitchell pushing the pace, teardrop runner, and flying in to pull it down is Smith. Look at the speed by Bowie. A little crossover. Looks a lot like his dad right there. Out of bounds it goes, and it'll head the other way. Great play from Amir Sims defensively in transition. Tigers up early, 14-7 in Little John. An early seven-point Clemson lead. We welcome you back to Little John. Amir Sims getting it done defensively so far, Kelly. He is, and, and that play recently in transition, you'll see it here. It looks like he was going to take a charge. He thought about it and then went straight up. A volleyball block, if you will, just kept his hand straight up and absorbed the contact. No foul. I thought they still could have called a charge, but they didn't. Still, a good play inside from Amir Sims to avoid the foul and make a defensive stop. Sims 29 blocks a year ago in his freshman season. You can see how he is already in these first couple of games shown as he is up to his performance on both ends. He's going to be a vital part of this team this season. I know it's only two games in, but Sims seems like the breakout star for Clemson this year with how he's scoring the ball and playing well on the defensive end. Only averaging two rebounds per game so far. You'd like to see that number go up. No cape for Marcus Harris, but boy, didn't he fly to reject that attempt. He elevated to get up to block Marquise Reed's shot. We'll see if Reed uses the pump fake a little more after that swat from Marcus Harris. Kind of a four-out, one-in team for Sam Houston State, but they're very athletic. You see Eli Thomas into the game for the first time, and they're going to get him for the second step. And the travel on Thomas, who was limited in practice leading in because he had a little bit of a flu, and that, of course, after the preseason injuries he's had. So as Brad Brownell lamented yesterday when visiting with the media, he just doesn't feel like they've, they've kind of been able to get into the, the sink and the rhythm they want in terms of games and practice and so forth because they just have so many guys who've been out with various illnesses or injuries. It can be really tough when you only have eight or nine scholarship guys. You can't even go good on good. You can't even go five on five. And that play there, it seemed like Eli Thomas coming right off the bench, a little rusty, just forgot to put the ball down and dribble. Shot clock under 10. Give to Cameron Delaney. The lid remains on for Sam Houston State. Comes down to John Newman. And Clyde Kraft, who just checks in, brings it over midcourt. Tigers working on the perimeter. Here's Sims. He blows right past Smith. Feed down low, and Thomas is going to head to the line. That's what Clemson has to do all game to get Eli Thomas and Javen White involved inside. Get by your man, create a situation where the Bearcats have to come over and help, and then dish to Eli Thomas. Get him going that way. He would have had an easy two, but was clobbered inside. Kai Mitchell picking up his first, so two on Sam Houston State, one so far. I mean, Tiger Ball Club that, as a result of all the various health issues, doesn't really have a deep bench, so they obviously don't want to see the fouls build up, although Thomas in that ball game the other night ended up with four personal fouls against North Carolina Central. Now we get a modification. It's not on Mitchell. Instead, they called it on Chad Bowie, the point guard, so that'll be his first. Our officiating crew, Ron Gruber, Jamie Lucky, and Bert Smith tonight. That's a big deal because that would have been Mitchell's second foul. I believe so or no that now he has none because they put it in the system and that's a the guy they, they want to see uh, go as long as he can right. without fouls Thomas so far in the season three out of four on free throws coming into the ball game 
A year ago, a guy who's a Texas neighbor, he probably knows all about Sam Houston State from the Dallas area. Eli Thomas shot 62% from the line, and he knocks down one there. Tigers extend their biggest lead of the ball game. I'm sure Jason Hooten at Sam Houston State also knows a lot about Eli Thomas, seeing him play on the AAU circuit in Texas. Bowie with Trap right in his face, and good Clyde Trap credit probably for that one being off. Nice job by Thomas to get the rebound. Tigers on an 8-0 run. Sims cross court. Tigers really moving it. Newman and swatted that time, but R.J. Smith hit it a little bit too hard and it will go out and stay in this end of the floor. John Newman III, a freshman for Clemson, who in these first couple games has played nearly 18 minutes a game, which is a lot for a freshman under Brownell. He's still waiting for that three-point shot to fall. He's taken some contested threes, only one for five now on the year. He's a better shooter than that, but still adjusting to the to the college game. Bubba Furlong, one of the reserve big men for this Sam Houston State team, checking in. Mitchell will get a breather. In a pretty good young player for them, number 10, to defending his fellow freshman Newman, Zach Nuttall. And they expect him to do some scoring for him. He's gotten off to a good start. Out high, Reed, who he lost the handle, comes to Smith ahead to Bowie. One man to beat Sims goes under. No tip follow. Battle for the ball out of bounds. It will stay that way. Nice job recovering that time by Amir Sims. A second really good play defensively by Amir Sims in transition. And not only has he prevented Sam Houston State from scoring, no fouls on either of those. Straight up, absorbing contact, not breaking the plane. Amir Sims, two great plays preventing Sam Houston State from preventing easy buckets. Well, you like what you see out of Chad Bowie again, as we noted, the guy inbounding for Sam Houston State, son of a former NBA player. His dad was on those great teams in Oklahoma that had Chooch Kennedy and some others, like Stacy King in the late 80s. Furlong just into the game. He can't get the lid off the basket for Sam Houston State. And here comes Clemson. Sam Houston State now 2 of 14 from the field. They haven't really turned it over. They just can't make shots. And a three-second violation. That might be the first one we've seen in two games in roughly seven minutes called this year. Granted, against the Citadel, you're not going to see it that much, but uh, didn't see one in the last game either. It's rarely called in college basketball. You don't see it much. So that time, you're in for a treat, folks. A rare three-second call here in Clemson today. Sam Houston State picked six in the preseason Southland Conference. Poll, a conference that includes the likes of Stephen F. Austin and the Estate, Abilene Christian. Had some transition over the years in terms of teams exiting and enter, enter, entering, but basically a Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas lead. That time, Trapp had the steal, then promptly fouled by Nuttall, and that'll be his first. Good defensive play here by Clemson. Clyde Trapp getting in the passing lanes. Earning his minutes as his minutes have increased this year in that backup point guard role. Clyde Trapp's a good defender, and that time pressuring the ball up near half court. Trapp had three steals in that opening game against the Citadel, so he gets his first tonight. Thomas, little mid range, haven't seen that out of him in his time at Clemson, and it comes down to Sam Houston State again. It's obvious that Eli Thomas is rusty. He hasn't practiced much this week dealing with illness and injury. He's still trying to get into the flow of this game. Juan Matthews. Just into the game, on the wing, and a downtown bomb for Zach Nuttall. That ends a long scoring drought for the Bearcats team, and they're back within five. And they're setting things up. Clemson's had a bit of a spell here without scoring a field goal. Clemson scored 14 points in nearly the first four minutes, and now, like you said, Pete's struggling a bit to put the ball in the hole. New hard foul that time. They'll get Bubba Furlong for his first. So, kind of been cat and mouse the first three minutes after the Tigers build an eight-point lead. Nuttall off the bench for a bomb. Clemson still up by five. With Kelly Gramlich, Pete Gannity with you back at Little John Coliseum. Tigers lead by five, and... Well, this is that play moments ago. Made by Bubba Furlong inside a reserve big man for Sam Houston State. We've seen a lot of solid defensive plays so far, Pete. Avoiding the foul, getting your hands on that ball, 
and just making good, solid plays inside. We've seen that from both teams. Tigers have gone over four and a half minutes without a field goal. Amir Sims will head to the line and look to at least add some points to this five-point advantage. Sims now four out of five in the early going this season from the line. A year ago, he shot 58%. I really see Amir Sims as a guy who's going to get it up to double-figure scoring and get it around seven or eight rebounds, depending on how many he takes away from Eli Thomas. But uh, I think he becomes... That maybe that third scoring option this year, if not the fourth one behind Thomas. Well, right now, Clemson has five players averaging in double figures. They had five last year with Grantham and DeVoe, so you know Sims has to step up, and he's done that so far in these first two games. Long one launched by the other Delaney. That's Josh, who their coaches will tell you is maybe the better shooter, even though he's off just a 25% start beyond the arc. and wasn't that welcome for the Bearcats. They're back within four. He played really well down the stretch last year for the Bearcats. Sal, he made the Southland All-Tournament team in those two games they played in the conference tournament. Good start for him. Yeah, he averaged 19 points a game in their two conference tourney games. He had 12 the other day over at Louisiana Tech. Trap. Reed hung up. Did a good job by Nuttall not to commit the foul. And now Reed can't shoot over him. Battle for the rebound. They're going to get the foul on Javen White backing in. Here's the three ball from Josh Delaney. Way off the three-point line. Hands in his face, but no problem for him. He knocks it down. Three team fouls now on the Tiger. It's Javen White picking up his first four so far. As you see on the Bearcats out of Huntsville, Texas, over there in East Texas. Josh Delaney hung up. They'll kick it over into the corner. A fellow who's not far from home playing tonight, Zaquan Matthews out of Charlotte, just transferred into their program. And that'll send it the other way. If, uh, from the Clemson uh, fans' perspective, you may not be that familiar with Sam Houston State or Huntsville, Texas. If you happen to go out and watch the Tigers play football at Texas A&M this year and you flew into Houston, when you were driving from Houston up to College Station, you weren't all that far at all from their home in Huntsville, Texas. You pretty much go right by there on your way to College Station, just a few miles up the road off the east. And Marquise Reed now picking up his first personal to go the other way. That's two straight over the back fouls called on Clemson. One on Javen White on the earlier possession and there on Marquise Reed. Frustrated by that call, he thought that he didn't foul him. He tried to just tip it out, but that's twice in a row for Clemson. Two quick fouls and off-ball fouls. Tigers doing a good job defensively so far, and despite this drought, getting a field goal, oh, that looks like it's going to end right now. Reed, and a gentle touch. Marquise Reed getting out in the passing lanes, an easy two for Clemson to get them out of this drought. That's what you need. Turn your defense into offense and get back on the scoreboard. Six minutes without a field goal, roughly, before Reed hit that. So, as I was going to note, even though they hadn't had a field goal, they maintained the lead. Now they build it out to a half dozen. Tigers have led by as many as eight here in the opening half of play. R.J. Smith will turn around over Mitchell. There's Eli Thomas pulling it down. Good defense inside from Shelton Mitchell. Matched up against a bigger player in R.J. Smith. Held his own. Forced him to take a bad shot. By Tramp, going to fire a Trey attempt. Battle inside. Look at Thomas. Look at the battle inside from Eli Thomas to grab that rebound and to finish. Big play from Eli Thomas. That's the kind of thing that Jason Hooten, the coach of Sam Houston State, worried about in this ball game. Just the length that Clemson has. Another three attempt for Delaney. Won't go. Battle inside for the rebound, and a foul is called. So Josh Delaney is now one out of two beyond the arc. I believe they're going to get a Tigers. And Elijah Thomas will be called for his first personal foul. They say he both hooked and held. Pretty nice job that time by Reed on the steal and the score. There's two looks at the replay of the pick six from Marquise Reed. He did that against the Citadel. We saw him get out in the passing lanes and create easy offense, and he's doing that again today. Already in double figures with ten points. So the officials think there may be some type of intentional foul here against Elijah Thomas. Now here's Thomas putting it back up and in. Just finding a way to grab that rebound. Eli Thomas, no quit inside as he grabbed that rebound. Here's the, the replay of Eli again. 
It's going to be a flagrant one. For a second straight game, Elijah Thomas called for a flagrant one on a hold on that previous play. I don't believe that was on the basket. It was on this play down right. here. The other night we saw against North Carolina Central one of the most invisible flagrant ones you can see call. In fact, I asked Eli about it. He said that we've been told they're trying to clamp down this year on it. As it always almost happens whenever there's a rule change implemented, we'll see how much officials across the country are doing such come February or March. But in this case, a flagrant one called against Elijah Thomas. He's, again, it, it, seemingly in disbelief based on his initial expression when they first called it. And so, two free throws in the ball for Sam Houston State. And the first one goes down for Bubba Furlong. A sophomore makes one out of two. Now let's see what happened and see if we can figure it out. So the hold inside and the fact that he was hooked around Furlong and maybe the, the fact that he had interlocked just for a moment. Sure. He's tr they're trying to emphasize the hook and that I think that hook prevented uh, Furlong from getting off the ground and, and jumping to his highest point. But still, that, that's a very surprising, kind of baffling call. Sam Houston State, they pulled within four just a moment ago. Taking their time. Ty Mitchell just checked back in. Good job by Thomas to get a hand on that and not commit the foul. Tigers again with a defensive stand. And that's big because Thomas now has the one foul from the flagrant. So you can't pick up your second this early. A solid defensive play by Eli Thomas. David Scar off that big game against North Carolina Central. And he scored a Hudson High 16 points. Trap. Looking to kick it away and... Another long one attempted by Reed. Battle for the ball. Won by Sam Houston State. Here comes Josh Delaney. Scara backed out of that play a little bit. He was almost going to go over the back, and he thought twice about it because of these recent calls. Nuttall made one from that distance moments ago. Not that time. Tigers looking to build their biggest lead of the game once again. They've been up by as many as eight. Mitchell from well beyond the arc. Oh, he couldn't get the friendly roll. And the rebound taken down by Ty Mitchell of the Bearcats. So, again, our chess match goes on. And we've seen long droughts for each team in this game. And that's the result of the fact we've been staying on the same difference in score for the better part of this opening half or so, it seems. Strong move inside by the six-foot Josh Delaney off the bench. He's got five points coming off that dozen he had at La Tech the other day. That's a tough shot for Josh Delaney. Like you said, only six foot. Had to find a way to get that ball off. Credit him. An, an excellent move inside to find a way to score. Trap for Reed. And Marquise Reed. A block is called. They're actually going to get Clyde trapped for the foul. Tigers holding the lead. It's five. You know, we've told you Christian Wilkins is one of the great sports fans on this campus, but one of the great basketball fans is the fellow on the far left who, after football, he, the guy is a basketball nut, grew up watching Michael Jordan, and when he plays uh, pickup games, I think he thinks he is Michael Jordan. Well, take a look at this. Look at this play. Clyde Trapp shoots the three. Eli Thomas is boxed out. He does not have good position. But one thing we don't talk about enough in basketball, it's hard to hold that box out. He fights around, grabs that board, and scores an easy two. Bearcats basketball. Baseline jumper goes down by Cameron Delaney. Began his career at Denver. He's originally from Parker Heights, Texas. His brother had arrived at Sam Houston State. They also had a sister who played for the Sam Houston State women's team, so he decided to come home after a season out in the Rockies. And this year is when he really has kind of had it all click in, at least over the first few games in terms of his scoring. Bearcats as close as they've been in a while as the Tigers lead. One time at eight, reduced to three. Them collapsed offensively and reach in by Bowie, but the Tigers will keep it. Just five on the shot clock. Here's the replay of that Cameron Delaney mid-range jumper. You can't give him anything that wide open. He's going to knock it down. And previously, 
Sam Houston State's going to double. They're going to try to double Eli Thomas and force him to pass that ball out because they just don't have the size inside. Top step read. Good defense inside by the Bearcats. It'll go as a shot clock violation and a turnover by Clemson. And one thing Coach Hooten emphasized to us in our pregame talk with him, he sees himself, himself as a defensive-minded coach. And so a shot clock violation like that, there's nothing a defensive coach loves more than a shot clock violation. Good defense there from the Bearcats. Six turnovers so far by Clemson. Just two for the Bearcats. That one, though, will be their third. Good job by Scara playing the baseline game. Scara. And he rattles home the trade. David Scara the other night had a big night scoring all over the court. Scar's first shot at attempt of the day knocks it down. I talked with Terrence Oglesby, Clemson's former sharpshooter, who's on staff before the game. He said they've changed two things, two little tweaks to Scar's shot. When he jumps up, he comes right back down in that same spot. He doesn't end up two feet in front of himself like he used to. And then he gets more arc on that shot. And those two little things have helped him shoot the ball a lot better this year. And Cameron Delaney attempt grazing the rim. Mitchell for Thomas. Nice try by Eli, but out of bounds it goes. Not a bad idea in transition. We'll see the Tigers score a lot like that this year, but we'll see him score this way as well. Here's the steal. Scara gets his hand on the ball, saves it. A good play, then gets it out. Tigers try to run. Scara benefits again, gets that shot in transition. More arc on that shot. It looks like he has his legs into it more, and that's paying off big time for Scara. Scara just 23% beyond the arc a year ago. And now we're going to get an illegal screen called, I believe, against Bowie. And that'll be the point guard's second personal. That's not good news for this Bearcats team. He put his shoulder into Marquise Reed as he was kind of going after a loose ball. So a weird play there. He looks a little confused on the bench as to where the foul was committed. So five and a half to go. Mark that down because Bowie's an important part of what they do on the offensive end of the floor. Especially Albert Almanza just checking into the ball game. Reed on a drive toward the basket. Call for the travel and that'll be turnover number seven in the opening half against Clemson. On that play, Reed wasn't sure if he wanted to pull up or take the floater. So he kind of was in between and it ended up being a travel. He took too many steps. You got to decide, am I going to jump stop and take this jumper or am I going to take the floater when I go baseline? Cameron Delaney. And now Mitchell going to load one up. Thomas got out there with good hustle to get the rebound. One Delaney to another, and that's not going to go for his twin brother, Josh. Sam Houston State just keeps shooting threes. That's their 12th attempt. They only shoot 29% heading into this game. And two out of 12 beyond the arc so far. Big story, and they're shooting just 23% from the floor on the other end. And that'll be another personal foul against them. And that even things up at 6-6. Six and six. That's a textbook blocking foul right there on Kai Mitchell. And Marquise Reed attacking, going downhill at a quick rate. It's tough for Mitchell to move his feet and get in front of Marquise Reed. And we saw one of our officials come over chatting with the scorer's table. And they were determining if they were going to reset the shot clock. They are not going to. So it'll be down to the 24 on the shot clock. The, I'm sorry, they reset it under the under the new rule. Yeah, they, they, they put it back uh, where they should have. Tyson just into the game for the Tigers. Reed dogged over there on the wing. Get one to go late in the shot clock. Good scrappy play by White. But good job to come out of there by Josh Delaney. Here's his brother Cameron. Mitchell backs inside. Righty hook and a gentle touch. Ty Mitchell came to them with scoring prowess. And the ability to rebound inside out of the junior college level. He leads the Bearcats right now with seven points. Three of six shooting. He's been effective inside. Wow, that's going to be the second on Mitchell. He couldn't believe it. Really nice move by Scora to make the grab on his way to the basket. Now we'll see him go to the line. Here's that. Here's Scara going right at Kai Mitchell. And Mitchell thought his hands were straight up, but he moved his feet. And Scara initiated that contact. So a foul call on Mitchell there. That is uh, really tough. 
I thought they, they had called one moments ago on Mitchell, but apparently that wasn't the case. So they list him with just one. I thought he had two. Earlier in the game, they called one, and then it was rescinded. But then there was another one just moments ago. Five-point game, and that miss coming down to Almanza. For as badly as they're playing, I've got to think their head coach, you see, uh, you saw him at the bottom of your screen, Jason Newton's got to be happy they're only down by five on an ACC floor and a number 19 team in the country. I think they've played fairly well. They haven't turned the ball over. They've gotten good looks like that for Mitchell. They just haven't made shots, and recently they've hit a few more. But they're 7 of 27 from the field. I think they haven't played that poorly in this first half, Pete, but you got to make shots to stay in the game, and now they're starting to. Real nice move inside by Mitchell. So for clarity, they only list him with the one foul, so that's big news for them. Tyson, the freshman, and he bombs a big one. Tyson, Hunter Tyson. Tyson was so ready to shoot that ball. His feet were set. He was down in a stance, and a good pass there hit him right in the pocket. And that's a big three for Clemson to extend this lead, and Hunter Tyson doing his job off the bench. Six points the other night for the freshman out of the Charlotte area. Josh Delaney will give it to his brother Cameron. Mitchell moving on Sims. Stop and pop Almanza, Albert Almanza. Fifth year senior out of Austin, St. Stephen's, and a guy who went down with a knee injury, really hurt them down the stretch in conference play, not having him a year ago. It was an important piece off their bench. Reed trying to continue a good first half scoring. Mitchell battling with Sims. And they're going to say last touch by the Tigers. A Clemson team, they needed that big bucket right there from their freshman. They got it. They lead by four. Four-point lead for Clemson late in the opening half of play. Check out this play here from Sam Houston State. Nuttall, the freshman, attacks the baseline. He draws two. Bo Scara and Sims commit to the ball handler. That leaves Kai Mitchell wide open. And you see an easy finish for Kai Mitchell. And that's a heads-up play from the freshman, Zach Nuttall, who draws two and makes a good pass out of a big double team. Tigers have shown some full-court pressure tonight. They did just then. Josh Delaney. Sam Houston said, I've got to think, and it looks like that's the plan. They're probably going to try to run some clock here late first half and stay as close as they can. Heading into the break, if not giving themselves an advantage. Almanza out high. Delaney, no roll. Tip in front. It'll go down, and I believe it was Zach Nuttall, the freshman, who got in there and tipped that one in. The 6'3 freshman. He elevated inside, and you have to have good instincts, too, to anticipate when that ball's coming off the rim. That's a big play from the freshman to cut this Clemson lead to two. Tell you what, the way Sam Houston State's bounced back from that eight-point deficit. They're picked six in their conference. I want to see how good the top couple of teams are picked in that league. They have been looking real good so far. Knocked away, recovered by Tyson, and now they'll get Nuttall on the reach in foul. Take another look at Nuttall among the big guys. Watch how Nuttall elevates. Just comes out of nowhere. Level with the rim. And times it perfectly to grab that ball off the rim as well. He out jumps everybody inside. Second foul on Nuttall. He'll go to the bench. So two of their better guards. Nuttall the freshman. Bowie the junior. Two opening half fouls. Bearcats have eight. Free throws upcoming for Hunter Tyson. Did not go to the line the other night. First game, he was four out of six against the Citadel. And he'll take another try. Tyson's provided a good spark off the bench for Coach Brownell, knocking down that three and then shooting the ball well from the free throw line. And Brownell, third time he's gone against the Sam Houston State team. He faced him twice when he's a right state. Nice job by Sims to run down the miss by Hunter Tyson. So the Tigers a chance to build on a three-point advantage. That's huge. Gives Clemson another possession. They can get a good shot here, build on that lead. Valuable offensive rebound from Amir Sims. Tim shedding Almanza. And got all the way up in the backcourt and then looked like one of the Walendas on the tightrope rolling along right there. That's something you don't see every day. Pete. It defied the laws of physics, <laughs> if not gravity. Or it the just theory of relativity. Rolled on the top of that backboard. Wow. 
Amir Sims wanted that too. You can see it. Chance to tie here for Sam Houston State. When they were down by eight, they would have signed up for that going into the late stages of the opening half. Smith defended by Sims. Now Monza trying to hit another one as Thomas got in his face, count it, and they're going to get Eli Thomas for his second foul. That is not what you want if you're Clemson in that scenario. This is a contested three, so you get out, you put your hand in his face, see if he can make a tough shot, but you don't want to foul him. And then a really beneficial roll on the rim as Almanza goes for the four-point play. And he gets it. Third free throw try of this senior for Albert Almanza, and we're going to call it a four-point play. They have yet to change it on the scoreboard, and now two of the officials going to talk things over. Bert Smith and Ron Groover want to come over and take a look on the monitor. It was real close. I, I wasn't 100% sure when he launched it. It was on the line, so... They're going to take a look for clarity, and they have, and they've confirmed it. So a four-point play for Albert Almanza, who scored just one point Sunday against La Tech, and he has come off the bench and given them a big boost with six points so far. And we've had a, another lead change with the first one in a while. The very rare four-point play. On that possession, Pete, you said they could tie it up because you don't think that a four-point play can happen like that. Four lead changes, but our first since the early minutes of this ball game. Mitchell way out front and Shelton answering. Mitchell needed that and Clemson needed that. He's been quiet all day. He'll take that into the half and hopefully have a bigger half for the Tigers in the he second half. 37% a year ago and a milestone for him. 750 career points for the Tigers senior who began his career at Vanderbilt and has been fabulous now playing in his third season here at Clemson. One to go. Almanza. First half he's having. It would have been sun if that went down, and that'll bring us into the break. A couple of late lead changes. The Tigers will have a two-point advantage in this first-ever meeting against the Bearcats of Sam Houston State, a Clemson team a year ago that was 19-2 and when in the lead at the half. They led at the break so far in their first two ball games this season. Tigers playing well so far with that final three. Sam Houston State fighting back, making this a game, a two-point deficit at the half. We'll be back for more in a moment. Teams getting ready for the second half. Tigers lead by two. Sam Houston State out of the Southland Conference. Just the second team in that conference is currently in that uh, that the Tigers have played. It's a conference teams in Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas. First time they played a current Southland Conference team all the way back 1980 when they beat the Lamar Cardinals in the Sweet 16 and the Tigers in their first NCAA tournament. Knocked off a ball club coached by Billy Tubbs, Lamar, and went on to the uh, Elite Eight and played UCLA. But interesting uh, that that's a, a memory they can trace to the Southland Conference. Let's get to the action of the opening half against this Southland Conference team for the Clemson Tigers. And this is full of guys named Reed and Mitchell. <laughs> Full of guys named Reed and Mitchell, that's right. And we'll start with Marquise Reed for Clemson. He leads everybody in this game in scoring. He is attacking the basket early, hitting floaters, and then the fake pass for the three-pointer on the baseline. A good pass there from Amir Sims. And then the defense, doing it in all three phases, scoring from a steal there is Marquise Reed. And here's the defense for Sam Houston State. They played well defensively. They held Clemson to only 32 points. Tigers didn't shoot the ball well from three. Sam Houston State, good on-ball defense, getting out in passing lanes, being aggressive. They caused a shot clock violation early, which is the play right here, which you know Coach Hooten loves. And then, of course, Kai Mitchell has been solid, leading the Sam Houston State offensive attack. Nine points for Kai Mitchell. He's doing it inside, floaters, turnarounds, mid-range as well. He's getting it done all over the floor. Kai Mitchell, the 6'7 junior, playing well for the Bearcats. Kai Mitchell, interestingly enough, his high school coach, talk about a connection to te Texas basketball, he's from the New York area. Played for a coach who was a guard on that 1966 Texas Western team that pulled the stunning upset of Kentucky, and they made the movie, of course, uh, about 
And I, I, I would hope and I, I can only assume that he's familiar with the story. And if, boy, if my high school coach had that kind of history, I'd be, you know, picking his brain all the time. But uh, Ty Mitchell from just outside of New York City, the Tigers' Shelton Mitchell is from Waxhaw, North Carolina. You saw Shelton. We'll see if he can win the battle of the Mitchells. Brad Brownell has always had good defensive teams. Look at that number right there, Kelly. It shows you just how good his teams have been defensively. 32-2 and two when holding teams under 52 points. And Sam Houston State comes in averaging 82.7 points per game. They played a few D3 opponents early on and played Louisiana Tech. So still, to hold the Bearcats to 30 at the half, that's an accomplishment when you look at how much they average. Now, Clemson, I think, would rather be up near the 40s at the half. But if we're talking just defensively, I think both teams has have played well defensively. Tigers moving up three notches in the latest AP poll that saw Duke jump over a Kansas team that hadn't lost, but the Blue Devils so impressive in their first two wins. So now Duke with all those freshmen, number one, the Virginia Cavaliers. At number four, there's North Carolina, Florida State. Syracuse gives the Tigers five in the top 15. Virginia Tech and Clemson are giving the ACC five in the top 15. Syracuse, the next two, the Hokies and Tigers, give the conference seven in the top 20. Very impressive. You've got those three in the top 10, Duke, Carolina, and Virginia. But what the ACC prides itself on right now is that depth. Clemson and Virginia Tech and Florida State and Syracuse all in that 10 to 20 range. It's never an easy night in the ACC. Sam Houston State ball to start things out. I mentioned Kai Mitchell, his good work in the first half. A little bit French pastry push that time, and it comes down to Shelton Mitchell. He went right at Clemson. He felt he felt good in that first half. Didn't want halftime to to happen. Mitchell right past Bowie, who knew it. With two fouls, he couldn't do anything else but watch his. Counterpart score a bucket, gives Clemson the four-point lead. Tigers led by as many as eight in that opening half. And that's something I'm sure Shelton Mitchell knows. He knows the guy guarding him has two fouls. Take the ball at him. Make him make a choice. Oh, and Eli Thomas and the grimace is because he just picked up his third foul. Take a look at this Shelton Mitchell play. Easiest two Shelton Mitchell will probably get all night and a good finish on the right side for a left-handed player. Javin White started the game and now he returns to action as Thomas for a second straight ball game finds himself in foul trouble early in half number two. And that's a negative for Clemson. You're not going to see much of Eli Thomas in the early part of the second half because of the fouls. But Javin White has played well. Four points in six minutes. So he's going to get his opportunity today. He'll have to add a few seconds to the game clock. And I believe it's four seconds off right now. Reed. 6-3 defending the 6-2 buoy, but he looks to have significant more, uh, length on him. And so we'll get the inbound. That is a tough part of the floor to inbound the ball. Very difficult. Mitchell fires over White. Ty Mitchell coming to play. He was originally going to go play for the Gales of Iona. He has come in here and been able to do some nice work. 11 points. First double-figure scorer for Sam Houston State. He's now leading scorer in the game, and he's 5 of 9 from the field. He's been very efficient inside. Sims, and knocked away by Bowie. Good job defensively as well by Cameron Delaney. Ahead it goes, and the rejection from behind. Boy, oh boy, Marcus Harris thought he had a layup, but there was Sims. Fade away. Not going to go down for Reed. You wish you can score off that big block, but... You, you got to make sure you hear those footsteps, Pete, because Amir Sims came out of nowhere with the big block off the glass. Two blocks in the ball game for Amir Sims. Pull it past Mitchell from Bowie. Nice idea. Couldn't finish. Good job collapsing, and White gets the rebound. Not sure if Javin White was credited for a block there, but a solid defensive play inside not to foul and to alter the shot. Reed, defended by Harris, who's been kept quiet tonight. And that time, Marquise can't get it to fall. Deflected off the fingertips of White. 
White actually was in the ORU program with R.J. Smith, who we've seen tonight on the floor for the Sam Houston State team. In time, nothing doing for Bowie. Again, good job in front of the basket by Clemson defense. Great job, and great job not fouling. That's so important right now when you have big guys in foul trouble. And there's Marquise Reed producing after a good defensive play. A big three for Marquise Reed. He now has 13 points, his second three of the night. Marquise Reed now two out of six. Jason Hooten wants to talk about it. You cannot give Marcus Marquise Reed that kind of time and expect different results. Sam Houston State trying to hang around and get what will be a statement win for their program on the road. They trailed by two. They've got a Mitchell who's been doing good scoring for them. The Tigers have been getting good scoring from their backcourt tandem as well. Tigers lead Sam Houston State by five early in the second half. This is a perfect example why you can't give up on a play. Amir Sims turns the ball over offensively, races back with the big block off the glass. Defensively, Amir Sims not giving up and coming up with a big play as he gets his hands on that ball. Tigers have built that lead back out to five after they were up by two at the break. Trailed by as many as eight opening half. Delaney fires, and that's Cameron Delaney. Three and his brother have been able to knock him down from outside. That brings him right back within two. He's only shooting 28% from three on the year, but we had a perfect angle to see that ball. It was in the second it left his hand. There's no doubt about that one. Scarra for Reed, knocked away and eventually taken by Harris. Knocked away from him, scramble for the ball. And the arrow pointing Clemson's way. And actually the Tigers went ahead and called the timeout, so they keep the arrow where it is. And so we'll take a look at really nice job by Cameron Delaney. And boy, they're loving it over on that Sam Houston State bench, and well, they should be. You see Zach Nuttall, the freshman, playing a little air guitar. He's pumped up with the three from his redshirt senior, Cameron Delaney. And the longer Sam Houston stays in this game, the longer they hang around, the more confidence they will build. And you can see that on their bench. I think Sam Houston State is the looser team right now. Clemson's pressing a bit. They're turning the ball over. They're looking a bit sloppy, sloppy offensively. But Sam Houston State's playing free. Once they start to hit a couple shots, it seems like they feel they feel good in Little John right now. Here's a scrappy play we saw just before the timeout. Good hustle from both teams. Both teams diving all over the floor. Amir Sims gets his hands on the ball, and Coach Brownell, right next to the official, calls a timeout to keep hold of that possession. But both teams flying all over the place tonight. Delaney brothers have combined for 10 points. Big reason why Bearcats are down by just two. Sam Houston State, we noted for the past five years, they've had 20 wins, but they haven't been to the NCAA tourney since 2010. In their D1 history, just two NCAA trips, but guy coaching them, Jason Hooten, is one of those. Alley oop, try, no, and the ball deflected on over. That was a great idea and a great look from Marquise Reed, but he just put too much on that pass for Javen White. Long one on the way and draining it is R.J. Smith out of Olathe, Kansas. Came to them from Butler Community College and Sam Houston State has its first lead since very early in this game when they were up by a couple. First lead change of the second half. The Bearcats are two of two from three in this half. They didn't shoot it well in the first half, made only three threes, but they are lighting it up from downtown in the second half. Gara hit a three in the opening half. Can't get the roll. Mitchell flies in for the Bearcats rebound. They've got a chance to build on this lead of a deuce. That's the guy who should do a lot more scoring for them and will. Harris, he almost made a bad pass, but Boo will restore order. Harris was preseason all Southland. Preseason yeah. second team, and he's been pretty quiet tonight. He doesn't have a point. Average nine a game last year. Bowie inside, no. Good job by R.J. Smith to keep the possession alive. Shot clock doesn't change. And Cameron Delaney realized it. And there's White with the rebound. We'll get a reach-in foul. Heads-up play by Delaney to take that shot, knowing that the shot clock did not reset. R.J. Smith committing that foul, but getting the splash right there. The visiting Bearcats have a one-point lead. 
Tigers trail by one. A look into our control room. Notice these smart-looking new chairs with the paws. Reports are that it's so comfortable, though, that many of our stealth crew have fallen asleep <laughs> during the telecast. Gosh, I hope it's not us that's doing that. Tell you what, you're watching on the AC Digital Network coming in August. 15 schools, one network. We'll go linear. The ACC Network over the air, August of 2019. Pull up a comfortable chair akin to those we have behind the scenes here and enjoy all the action and a nice play out of the timeout by Brad Brownell and Shelton Mitchell puts the Tigers back in front by a point. That is exactly what you want out of a timeout. A quick back screen and a good pass to Shelton Mitchell for the easy two. Good execution after Coach Brownell drew up that play. Seventh lead change in the ball game. Second since the intermission. Houston State, 21 wins a year ago. Bowie, one of their newcomers, no. Look at that. Nice work, though, by Cameron Delaney. First to box and get it off the floor. Not able to knock it down. Javen White doing a nice job cleaning up the glass. Sam Houston State's 10th offensive rebound. They've gotten after it offensively and provided themselves a second chance opportunity throughout this game. Scari, you like the quick release. Big play inside. Sims, he'll head to the line. And that's what we referenced earlier, Pete. Sims has scored it really well so far. But he needs to up it or up his rebounding numbers. And that time he did so on that play. And here's the earlier bucket, the back screen for Shelton Mitchell. Easy two, another easy two for Shelton Mitchell, as we saw earlier. But Sims, they need him to continue to attack the glass, and he did it on that play. And Sims goes to the line where tonight he's two out of two. With the guards that Clemson has, I would think you'll see even more of that kind of back cutting kind of play. For sure, and because you have good passers pretty much from one to four. Eli Thomas is a good passer, but mainly you see him used on the block. Scara, Sims, those guys can also make those passes. You need to have four men that can make good decisions to make plays like that happen. Perfect night so far on four free throw tries for Amir Sims. Tigers have a three-point advantage after moments ago. In their first deficit in this game in a while. Josh Delaney saw the double team. Gives to Smith. And R.J. Smith looking like J.R. Smith with that one. He knocks down another bomb, and it's tied up at 41. Smith is feeling it in this second half. Two threes for him. Sam Houston State, three of four from three in the second half. They were three of 15 in the first half. Reed, elbow jumper, rattles that one home. That's a signature for Marquise Reed. And you saw one of the things he's been working on during the offseason, and he's kind of moving momentum-wise to the offside, able to knock down a jet. You'll take that all day if you're Clemson. They try to find situations in their offense to get Marquise Reed in one-on-one -on -one situations because he's so good scoring the ball off the dribble. Reed knocking it away. That's what the Tigers' steal leader from a year ago can bring to the table. On his way to the bucket, he'll head to the line. He's doing it all, Pete. He's scoring offensively from the mid-range and inside, hitting threes, and then turning his defense into offense. Here's the steal. He gets out in the passing lane, gets his hand on the ball, and he's off to the races. And then this time, a good play by Reed to know that he was going to get contact, go up there, draw a foul. Get yourself to the free throw line. You're one of the best free throw shooters in the ACC. Find a way to get yourself two shots. Josh Delaney picking up his second, so three on the Bearcats in the second half. One so far on the Tigers. Here we go, Marquise Reed finishing second to Shelton Mitchell on this Clemson team. 85% number at the line. Such a smooth stroke, and so far this season he's been knocking him down at a similar rate. And this is what I was referencing earlier, Pete. Any chance you can get Marquise Reed in a one-on-one -on -one situation, more likely than not, he's going to be able to score on his man. If you can open the floor and give him some room to work, that's a good thing for Clemson. Reed on the night, a perfect three out of three from the line, building on that points total. And he's up to 17 in the ball game. 20 games in double figures a year ago for the Landover, Maryland native for this Clemson team. Not all the good scoring guard just off the bench. No, Reed the save. Here come the Tigers. That was an impressive rebound from Mark from Marquise Reed. He's only 6'3. That was a tough board to pull down. 8-3 run. Reed from the corner. And a 20-point night. With how Marquise Reed is playing right now, you cannot give him that open of a look. 
That's going to be money every time. Three out of seven on long range jumpers for Reed. Tigers have led by as many as eight in this ball game. The advantage back out to seven. He's on a 7 0 run himself. Josh Delaney almost lost the handle. Wary of those two bigs maybe coming out and double teaming. Harris, quiet night so far, and Reed might have gotten a fingernail on that one. Tigers can build their biggest lead of the night here. Mitchell, Reed. And Smith battling inside, didn't mean to, and he ended up catching John Newman in the face. And R.J. Smith in disbelief. He, he did not, you could tell, mean to do that. I have a feeling they'll still come over and look at the monitor. Or are they going to say that it was an intentional foul? And the folks watching on the replay screen above and, above and poor John Newman, but he looks like he's, he's okay. Oh, and I, I really don't think that, that Smith meant any intention right there. He was simply trying to cradle the ball. but Trying to grab that rebound, and one thing you're taught is to get your elbows out to protect the ball in that kind of situation. But he did get John Newman right in the face. That's a tough blow for the freshman. A little welcome to college basketball moment. Those things are going to happen. But I would imagine we might get a flagrant call right here, Pete. Yeah, so it's a personal foul, but... So no flagrant? At this point, that's what they're, they're evaluating. Reviewing. That's what they're evaluating. And it's hard ever to judge someone's intention, especially right. in the spirit of battling and that kind of thing. And... Based on these last two games, what we've seen called against Elijah Thomas, which looked, and they are going to call a flagrant one. They have to simply in this game when they, they called the interlock, which barely looked like one on Thomas, they've got to do something there. It was not meant uh, by Smith, I'm, I'm certain of, based on what it looked like on the play, but it will be a flagrant one. And so that'll mean a couple of free throws and the ball, and that's big because Sam Houston State had gotten a stand down seven. They looked like they were about to go to the other end of the court, but now the Tigers can build their biggest lead of the game just on the free throws and then add on to that off the inbound. And it stops the momentum a bit for Sam Houston State. You stop the clock, you get to the free throw line, you get the ball back. But credit Marquise Reed, a 7-0 run by himself, a, a, a jumper, two free throws, and a three, and he's built this Clemson lead back up to seven. John Newman at a really fine high school program at Greensboro Day. And that's really difficult, Pete, to take that elbow to the face and have to head right to the free throw line. That's not easy. And Newman knocking down that one, so jumper falling for the freshman, one of the more highly regarded recruits. And think of the change. Of think of the change there, Pete. Sam Houston had the ball. They were about to start the break. Now Clemson gets two free throws. They make one, and they get the ball back. So a big change in the game from that one foul call. Tigers matching their biggest lead of the night on that one out of two by Newman. Mitchell looking at on. Hustle by the senior to the hole. He goes and in. The Tigers have their first double-figure advantage of the night. And Mitchell will get to add on to it. One of the first rules of play in the guard spot in basketball. Follow your shot. Shelton Mitchell gets the offensive rebound, turns a possible three into a possible three-point play. Tigers have built a 10-point lead. Marquis Reed has 10 points of his own in this second half. Doing it in the mid-range, getting out in passing lanes defensively, turning that into fast break points, and then the three in the corner, a wide open look for Marquis Reed. So the 20-point night, team fouls now, 5-1 to one in the second half, Sam Houston State. And We need to begin evaluating some foul issues. Mitchell, often reliable at the line, waiting coming out of the time. That might have impacted him. His first, first missed free throw right. this season. First miss of the season. He had to sit there for about 20 seconds. That's never good for a free throw shooter to just sit there and wait to shoot the ball. He's now eight out of nine. Not all, no. Fight for the rebound. Mitchell of Sam Houston State. Scara. And he loses it out of bounds. That's a tough play for Clemson. Coach Brownell urging his team to grab the rebound, but you don't expect a three to come off the backboard. So it's a weird play to adjust when you're trying to grab that rebound. This will be Josh Delaney on the inbound. 
Nutter all had 10 against Louisiana Tech. There is Mitchell with the steal. The ref didn't help his cause. On the break, though, and he goes past Nuttall and puts it up and in. Shelton Mitchell building on his night. He has 13 points, second on the team behind Marquise Reed and scoring. Nice job by Mitchell to get out in the passing lane, and the official didn't know what to do. He struggled to get out of the way, but Mitchell recovered and still scored on that play. Tigers building out to their biggest lead of the game. Bank is open at night for R.J. Smith, and his head coach Jason Hooten will use another timeout. Good when you can turn defense into offense. Sometimes, though, you have more than just the other team to worry about. Shelton Mitchell deflects this pass and throws the ball around the official's back and still finds a way. That's an incredible play. We've seen a lot of interesting instances tonight, and then we see that, a three-point play off the glass. Back-to-back -back plays, the official getting in the way of a guard, and then a bank three-pointer. We're in for a crazy night here in Little John Pete. R.J. Smith now 6 out of 10 beyond the arc in his Sam Houston State career. And again, this was a point blank, a point blank firing by Smith. As a former shooter, Pete, you'll take the three, right? You want three points no matter how you can get it. But you don't want to see that on your highlight reel. It's a little embarrassing to bank in a three. I know that Smith will take that, and so will Coach Hooten in Sam Houston State. But you never really want to bank a three-pointer. And... The three he's made, that's a, now a career high for him. Giving him the six on the year over their first four games. A, a banker for three, I would think, is a lot like hitting a home run off the foul pole. You right. know? You're going to take it. You're going to trot around the bases. It just kind of doesn't, doesn't have that, that full glory feel, so to speak. Feed inside. Thomas back in there with those three fouls. They collapse on him. Really good job from behind by... Saquon Matthews, who transferred them from Cape Fear Community College over in Eastern North Carolina after playing at Chattanooga as a freshman. They're determined not to let Thomas beat them. That wasn't just a double team. That was a triple team inside when he got the ball. Wow. Josh Delaney can look at his teammate Smith and says, I don't need the backboard from there. And that suddenly makes it a six-point game after the Tigers had built the lead out beyond the, the ten-point mark. Two straight threes for Sam Houston State. They're now five of seven from three in this second half, shooting at an insane clip. And if you're looking at 30 minutes roughly into the game, as Mitchell is going to launch, he won't get it. Scara, and I think we need a foul call, and it's going to go against Cameron Delaney. Take a look at the first, the offense by Sam Houston's Josh Delaney. It, anytime you take a three from the edge of the Tiger Paw, that's a long three. If you're touching any part of that Tiger Paw, that is a long three-point shot. We're needing to reset the shot clock. So you see 53 points scored by Clemson after ball games in which they opened up with 171 to follow. But Sam Houston State, their coach, was telling us very interesting defensive metric that they show quite high in over the past decade. Someone put together the, the past 10 years, teams ranked as defensive efficiency in terms of field goal percentage, defense, and scoring, opponent scoring, and all that. And Sam Houston State ranked 21st in the nation in that metric, which was really impressive for the Bearcats. Their fellow Southland Conference team, Stephen F. Austin, was first in that list. Plays like you just saw by R.J. Smith. What, you just tell that's great coaching, great preparation, because he was reading what Clemson was about to do there. And he made a real nice step in to at least make the Tigers have to inbound, but Newman delivering. John Newman coming off a three-point effort against North Carolina Central after he opened with five against the Citadel and he's able to get that one to go down. Tigers lead back out to eight. Thompson's led by as many as 12 here in the second half. Smith, double team came from both Scara and Thomas and Scar with some scrappy play and good work right there. It's the pass from Shelton Mitchell. John Newman coming right off a curl. In rhythm, beautiful spin on that ball. And a silky smooth shot from the lefty. One lefty to another. Very worthy of two guards, both left-handed on the court at the same time in Mitchell and John Newman.
Brownell yelling instructions. Thomas, going to try to break down Mitchell of Sam Houston right there. Newman, corner Mitchell. Battle for the rebound. Sims, good hustle, good idea. Nice find out high to Reed. Huge rebound from Amir Sims, his fifth rebound tonight. And that gives Clemson a whole nother 30 seconds to work with if they choose. Little shake and bake and a fire and a make for Reed. And what does Brownell want? Give Marquise Reed one-on-one -on -one opportunities. That's what the shot clock or the reset of the shot clock did. You pass that pass back out and Marquise Reed can just go to work and get another opportunity. Back out to a double-figure advantage for this Clemson ball club. Other end of the court, not going to go down for Josh Delaney. Thomas, and he was standing on the baseline, so he'll stay in that end. He tried to tiptoe that line. That's a tough play to make when you're 6'10", like Eli Thomas. Amir Sims, boy, you see great hustle out of that sophomore, don't you? Amir Sims, long rebound, finds a way, and then this is a tough pass to make. A good catch from Marquise Reed, but you got to put some oomph on that ball to get it back out to, to Reed. Cameron Delaney. He's been the more potent scorer so far this year for them. Matthews gave it away to Almanza. Now Matthews has it back. Mitchell the fadeaway. Good job by Sims to fly in. Good defense by Thomas to create the air ball. Reed just six points off his career high with 22 in the game. They went back to Kai Mitchell. He's only had two points in the second half. He's been quieter. That's one of the few looks that he's gotten in the second half. Mitchell, nice idea. Thomas couldn't hang on, but there's Sims to clean it up. An inadvertent assist there for Eli Thomas. He might be credited with that. Amir Sims, right place, right time. Easy to. Tigers match their biggest lead of the night at 12 points. Sam Houston State getting, getting a taste of the ACC tonight, and then they'll head on down to Athens and get a taste of the SEC when they face Georgia Friday. Bowie, haven't heard from him in a while. Almost got that one to go. It comes down to Sims. Even though Sam Houston State has shot the ball better from three in the second half, five of eight, they're still pretty cold. Six of 21 from the field. They've only made one two-point basket from the field in the second half. Mitchell for Sims, and Amir! Two A's at the front of his name, and a double-A rating on that one from downtown. Huge bucket from Amir Sims to build this lead, and Sam Houston State's going to want a timeout. Jason Hooten calling it. Bearcats see the Tigers extend the lead to 15. Kelly Amir Sims was a top 100 player coming out of high school. We see why. He's doing it all. One of his seven rebounds right there to set up Marquise Reed for a jumper. Right place, right time for this two, a good finish inside. And then the big three to extend this Clemson lead to 15. And look at his reaction. He knew that one was in. Making him proud back home in Palmyra, Virginia. Tigers have a 15-point advantage as a result of Sims' good work and the fact that after Sam Houston State had taken a one-point lead at 38-37. You see what the Tigers have done since on the scoreboard. Bowie inside. Strong move on Newman. Chad Bowie, a looking player originally from Houston. Prior to that shot, Chad Bowie had yet to make a field goal tonight. He was 0 for 9. He needed that one. Average 13 plus a game a year ago at Kilgore College. With this big lead, Clemson trying to run that clock. You still want to get a good shot, but might as well use all 30 seconds to do so. Great find. Wide open is Trap, and Clyde Trap gets on the long-range parade. He's now one out of two beyond the arc in the game. Big reaction from Brownell after that play because you used all 30 seconds with this lead. You had ball movement, and you got a really good look for a shooter in the corner, and you knocked it down. And Houston State had a late rally Sunday afternoon over in Ruston, Louisiana against La Tech. Only to see the Bulldogs put them away late. Going to take another such rally again. The kick, Almanza, the finish by Mitchell and the foul. You saw Thomas hit the deck, but foul was called. On the Tigers, Amir Sims. And he picks up his second. 
Chad Bowie getting his first field goal of the night on this strong attack. And then here's the foul. Eli Thomas looked like he was trying to take the charge. They called the foul on Amir Sims. That's a scary situation. You never want a player on the ground when another player is jumping. Fortunate that no injuries resulted from that play. And Mitchell matches the 13 he had uh, in their second ball game of the year against Division Three Southwestern of Texas. So career high for him at the D1 level for the Hutchinson Community College transfer. And a guy who looks like he's going to be a very impressive player for them, especially in the Southland Conference. He's undersized tonight, but he won't be in the Southland. And he's held his own against these bigs for, from Clemson. Southland Conference, underrated league. Remember those NCAA tourney games Stephen F. Austin played a few years ago. A lot of great basketball played out there in the conference with teams from Texas and Louisiana and Arkansas. Bearcats get a stand, but time is not on their side. And Delaney can't get it to go. That was Cameron who missed, and the rebound coming down to Clemson. Trap fortunate there because he left the shooter. He left Cameron Delaney. I think he was trying to switch or, or get help side or whatnot, but you can't leave a shooter in that situation. You really like that Sims is coming out not only to try to hit a three, but in a ball handling role. I think that's very important. Look at Newman with the drive. That's why he was one of the more highly regarded players coming out of the state of North Carolina. Nice body control on that one and back out to a 15-point advantage. Big time finish from the freshman. Absorbed that contact and still found a way to score. Now Monza, fifth-year senior off that knee injury. That's why he's wearing the brace. Mitchell has handled the ball well, and he's found a man underneath, and the reverse. What a pretty play by Cameron Delaney. That was as good of a pass by Kai Mitchell. And that's what size does. Amir Sims, hand straight up, and you saw how difficult it was for Cameron Delaney to make that play. A good job by Sims not to foul, but an even more impressive finish from Delaney. Sims will give it a read. Reed. Better than 20 tonight, left that one short. I think in the air he halfway decided either shoot it or pass it. Good job by Mitchell to recover for Sam Houston State. The kind of defensive battle we thought we would see tonight. Maybe a little higher scoring than would have been expected to this point. There's three to go in the second half. Another wraparound, this time by Bowie. What athletic guards they have. A couple of spectacular buckets down low by their guard for Sam Houston State. Brad Brownell has seen his team's lead whittle down to 11. Going to take a timeout. This John Newman is a fun guy to watch for the Clemson team. Clyde Trap, wide open three from the corner. And there's the, a react from the Sam Houston State bench. John Newman making it happen for Clemson. Tigers lead 67 to 56, but Sam Houston State not going quietly. Chad Bowie's dad played in the NBA. Perhaps they worked on this in the driveway when he was growing up. This was an incredible look. Look, at I don't know how he even gets that ball up there. Put a lot of spin on it. See if that goes in, but it does look like he's practiced that. Incredible play from Bowie inside. Finding a way. He's undersized. Right, he's only 6'2". You got to find a way to score. Tigers ball with under three to play and. You don't want to make this any more thing more interesting uh, than it already has been. Right little back screen that time from high to low. Give the assist to Sims. And the good night continues scoring for Marquise Reed. He now has 24 in the ball game. And they ran a play to that a similar play like that a few timeouts ago, and it worked perfectly. And Sam Houston State just not adjusting. Clemson also executing at a high level. RJ Smith. And Bowie going to get it back out high to Josh Delaney. Smith has shown he can hit him from long range, be it by Swish or Bank. That time, though, missing everything. The Bearcats bench thought that he was fouled. Tigers the ball, the 13-point lead. We go 2-0 all time from teams currently in the Southland Conference. Scara not needed a score tonight, but he's been affected defensively. Shot clock low, jumper long range, and Sims. How about Amir? Marquise Reed, great job of drawing two defenders. You got to help off because Reed is so good on the dribble. 
A kick to Amir Sims. Nothing but net for the sophomore. Third Tiger in double figures is Sims with 12. Almanza no. Sims the rebound. And if things weren't already no longer in question, that might have been the last chance for Sam Houston State. You Noted know they're going to spend a lot of time in the East for the trip over to Athens Friday, then up to Johnson City, Tennessee for a couple of games. Tiger's going to get to spend the early part of Thanksgiving week in the Cayman Islands. And Offensive foul will be called. So Kelly draws up what you saw moments ago. Check out this previous play. Look at that eye contact right there. A wide open look. You see Marquise Reed's hand is up, calling for that basketball. Great pass from Amir Sims. Great execution. Got to tell you, that, that almost looked like Trevor Lawrence to one of his receivers right there. <laughs> it did. It With was a spiral. very spiral. Uh, there was a nice sp tight spiral on there. Amir Sims and Trevor Lawrence are relatively the same height. I was going to say, yeah, Lawrence uh, maybe an inch or two shy from the 6'7 Amir. Who has better hair, though? I'll let the fandom be the judge of that. <laughs> Smith defended by Thomas. Little dump off to Cameron Delaney. Thought about a shot. Feeds his brother and mom would be proud as Josh Delaney finishes inside. He'll head to the line. Here's that play to De one Delaney to another. Brother to brother. Finding his brother inside. A tough pass to make around Eli Thomas. And if you're Clemson, it's just not nece necessary to foul there with this lead. You don't want to give Sam Houston State a three-point play. Josh Delaney, a guy that they were able to get to come to them at a Harker Heights High School. He was heavily recruited. His brother also, Cameron, was heavily recruited. And he opted to go to Denver, but ended up for the final three years of his program with his brother at Sam Houston State. 13-point game by Trapp. Tyson in, and that says a lot. The freshmen come in when Brad Brown now knows there's going to be a lot of pressure like that. Knocked away. Scramble for the ball. Trapp. Battling eventually Xavier Bryan who just checked in couldn't hang on for Sam Houston State and the Tigers recover and Reed no but he was fouled so we'll head to the line and Marquise Reed with a couple of free throws and get within two of his career high another reason why you want Hunter Tyson in there as you take another look at this foul Marquise Reed heading to the line you want him in there because he's a good free throw shooter and that's a way to earn playing time as a young player if you can make free throws you can be on the court at the end of the game and that's why Tyson's out there. Read that pretty free throw. Look now, four out of four on the night. Has missed just one free throw attempt this season. In fact, on the year, he's now 11 out of 12. Make it 12 out of 13. A 26-point night for Reed. Newman will give him a breather. Tigers lead. Back out to 15 points. Led by as many as 16. Sam Houston State about to fall to 2-2. Two two. Tigers will be 3-0 and oh for a second straight year. Out of control. Still fighting inside was Cameron Delaney. Newman going to come away with it. And the Tigers will let the final seconds tick down. And Clemson... Well, they got a battle out of Sam Houston State. Brad Brownell likes to bring competitive teams in to play in the non-conference in terms of the mid-majors he schedules. And certainly Sam Houston State has a lot to be proud of before this eventual 74-59 Clemson win. A well-coached team. They're very good on the defensive end. Mitchell played well, led them with 14 points. But this was a big night for Marquis Reed. 26 points, 50% from the field, made all of his free throws, added five rebounds. His season high. Marquis Reed put on a show for the fans in Little John. Sam Houston State heads to Athens Friday night. They play at Georgia. The Tigers get to head to Paradise. Monday, they'll start out the three-game Cayman Islands portion of the Cayman Islands Classic against the Zips of Athens. Tigers win it by 15 on behalf of Kelly Gramlich. Pete Anity saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN.